Our next speaker is the mic on. Is the mic on? No. Can you guys hear me? Hello, hello. There we go. Our next speaker is an electronic textiles nerd, hardware hacker, and the author of The Crafty Kid's Guide to DIY Electronics. Her talk today explores the softer side of electronics from electronic embroidery and e-textiles to soft robotics and flexible PCBs. Please welcome to the Hackaday Supercon stage, Helen Lee. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone. Um, do yell at me if I'm speaking too fast. I've only got 20 minutes, so I'm gonna try and race through as much as I can possibly race through, but um, if I start to blur words together, give me a shout. All right, so yeah, my name is Helen Lee. Um, I am, um, for my day job, I'm head of community for Crowd Supply, which is an open source hardware crowdfunding company that probably lots of you already know. Um, but outside of that, my own personal practice, um, I like to make um, embedded instruments often um, using experimental materials. Um, and uh, let me show you a couple of things just to give you some context for my work. Um, so before I started working for Crowd Supply, um, I was a, a writer and a professional maker for many years. Like I wrote for Make Magazine and Hackaday, and this is a still from one of my books. Um, actually, this was the first. This book, The Crafty Kid Guide to DIY Electronics, was the first time I'd really taught electronics through the medium of craft. I wanted to build. I was doing a lot of work in schools at the time, and I wanted to make. Um, a book that was uh, was like female coded, right? So I wrote it with an advisory board of 150 girls, um, and they chose all the projects, they chose the title of the book, all of this kind of stuff. But the thing that really surprised me is when I started teaching electronics through the medium of um, like traditionally feminine coded crafts, um, the demographics in my workshops completely changed overnight. It was really interesting to me. I mean, I guess you know, it's, it's probably not that difficult to, to realize that like a, a robot car learn to solder through a hole kit might, uh, might, uh, might get a different audience to, um, to someone who's making a sparkle heart, but I guess uh, that was, it was an interesting experience anyway. Um, this is also one of mine, I've been, this is a product I made for Image and Heap, um, also electronics and craft, this was a, um, uh, accelerometer based gesture control musical glove. Um, and then, yeah, like most of the stuff that I do in my own personal work is stuff like this. It's experimental looking musical instruments using materials that aren't normally used. And I've gone on a bit of an e textiles deep dive over the last year. I just kind of got a little bit obsessed with a bunch of different techniques and materials. So I really wanted to share some of those with you um, today. Um, we've only got 20 minutes not in a whole hour, so I am going to have to skip through. But I do want us to focus a little bit on electronic embroidery. Um, so when most people think about electronics, they think about wires and boxes and maybe stiff fiberglass circuit boards. Um, but the wires in those boxes and the traces on that circuit path are only, they're just a path, right? for the electricity to move along. And by choosing different types of materials from the substrate, like this is a, this is a very simple circuit. This has got the LED, three, three volt LED, and it's going up the uh, thread to an LED coming back down. That's just a very simple um, two component circuit. Um, you can make this circuit just the same on a breadboard or on a PCB, um, but by changing the, the materials you're using, you change the context of everything. Um, a side note, if you are thinking about doing this, I'd recommend you get yourself some of these embroidery hoops um, because it really helps when you're starting out to stop making some of the basic mistakes. Um, and I'd also recommend that when you're starting out, you get some, some bonded material. This is felt. Um, it's much easier to work with when you're starting out as well. More on material types um, shortly. Um, but the first point of contact most people have with the idea of soft electronics is threads, right? Conductive thread. It's most, um, most the starting point for most people who experiment with this. So I'm going to spend some time talking you through um, the different types of conductive thread. Um, my favorite conductive threads, all of the different places you can buy the conductive threads, and the problems that you're most likely to run into alongside this. So. It's actually not been that long since we've had really good thread on the market. We used to have to make do with horrible fluffy stuff that would just go into short circuits um, constantly. Um, but we've got much wider a range um, now. I would say that they brought, they, they, you, when I'm thinking about starting a new project that uses conductor threads, I ask myself like a few questions before selecting the right one for the job. So one of the big things is, am I hand sewing or am I machine sewing? Um, because there are some threads that don't use that at all. You need to think about, um, 
what aesthetic you want, of course, with the different colors of threads. So here we have, uh, well, this kind of blown out here. And I've got loads of these threads with me. So I've brought loads of projects um, and materials to have a look at afterwards um, in the alleyway. Um, so this is a copper thread. This is one of my favorite threads. This is solderable. This is the only one on the whole board here that is solderable. Um, this one and this one um, are used for completely different things. This is it's spun copper, and they also do spun silver. Really beautiful, delicate for hand sewing, um, for different embroidery te techniques, it works really well. But it will like mess up your sewing machine. You're going to have a bad time if you put it in there. So if you're doing anything with a sewing machine, I would highly recommend that you use um, some, an, a thread like Madeira. I'll show you what that is in a sec. But that's this one. This is my favorite machine sewing thread. Um, but there's also all sorts of different things, right? So you've got ribbon for data cables, you've got like vel conductive Velcro for different connections. Um, but also, I mean, I'm not covering it here because it's not a thread, but I want to give a shout out, honorable mention to silicon coated wire, um, which is uh, really great for carrying more current um, and still feels nice against your skin. So. Um, so here's the here's here's a base. I'm not going to go too deep into this slide, um, but this is this is basically what material is made up of, right? And there's some there's some some uh, material jargony terms here. We've got fibers, we've got filaments, and we've got these fibers and blends. And these are basically the different ways that you can construct a thread, right? And these different phys these these different construction techniques have different electrical properties, and they also have different physical properties. So. As I say, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but you should know that there are many different types of ways to make thread, and that will impact the way that you use it, or the way you can use it. Um, also, diagrams are from Cobacan, which I will, which are an amazing uh, resource. I'll tell you about it later. Um, but yeah, so one of the things, so there's four things that you're looking for with the thread. You want to look at the resistance level. They all have data sheets, so you can just Google the data sheets for the um, for the thread that you've got. Um, some you've got to check if they're solderable or not. Um, only two threads on the market are solderable. Um, you've got to think about if it's going to um, fray easily and therefore make the short circuits. Is it machine sewable? And then you think about the, you know, the, the process that was made. Is it plied? Is it coated silver? What does that mean? Because like, you know, in 10 years, is it going to tarnish? Is it going to be non-functional? You know, you think about. Uh, you've got to think about your longevity of your project as well and how the metals will deteriorate. So yes, there's lots of things to think about with this, but um, uh, but we don't need to. But you don't need to think about all of these things. You you can just rely on my um, opinions because I've been obsessive over all of this and tried basically every thread on the market. Um, there is a slide with all of my favorite threads right at the end. Um, but I wanted to point out before I move on a couple of like um, embroidery 101 things. And um, if you're going to go off and have a go on this, uh, you can. Um, Make sure that you don't put things too close together, because again, you can make short circuits. And then make sure that your connections are really tight, like on the top, three or four stitches around instead of nice and loose. And then the reason I use an embroidery hoop with beginners is the vast majority of time when their project's not working um, is because the underneath is a mess and it's creating short circuits and it won't work. So tight connections and watch out for short circuits. And you're probably going to have a totally fine time with your first um, LED um, or whatever you can, you, you know, your first machine, uh, your word talent, your first sewable project. So, um, so that's uh, that's you know that's the getting started with the embroidering electronics. Um, but these are some more advanced techniques that I wanted to flag up here as well. Um, so this is. Um, so here we have, you can make any through-hole component into a sewable component by taking the legs of it into a needle nose pliers and just making a loop and then using that to sew. So you can do that with anything that, you know, that will work. And then this is how to get a chip on. So I'm the only person doing this, I think. Um, but mostly, if you want to put a chip on um, on a piece of fabric, you have to like. It's really annoying and difficult. Like people would like solder um, individual threads to individual pins of the chips, and then the chip would burn out, and your project would be completely useless. So I've been using Flex PCB breakout boards um, that you can swip, swap in and out with the dip chips. Um, that's all on my GitHub as well. So if you're also interested in putting chips on uh, fabric, you can use that. So this is actually this is I've got this with me as well. This this is a, um, a riff on a noisemaker called a crackle box um, that was um, designed by a Dutch artist um, called Michael Weiswitz, made in the 70s. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an homage to one of the early electronic music instruments, but um, it sounds terrible, so I take the speaker out. Yeah, but I've got it with me if you want to have a look at it. 
Um, what else? Oh yeah, this is not my work. This is an example of um, what I would call extremely advanced um, electronic embroidery. Um, so this is from an artist, Irene Posh, um, and this is a fully functional embroidered computer. It's a programmable 8-bit computer made of metal threads, magnets, glass, and beads. Um, you can't really see it super close up here, but there's um, to, to stop this, uh, to stop things, um, you know, to insulate. She's got beautiful ceramic um, beads and insulating the threads from each other. And then the thread here is laid down using a really useful technique um, called couching. It's an embroidery, um, embroidery technique where you lay a thicker, a thicker wire or you know, thread or whatever um, on the surface, on the substrate, and then you use small stitches to keep it in place. So really, it's, a, it's an embroidery technique really worth knowing about. And you can do that with wires as well, like full on like you know, anything you want. So couching is a really, really useful thing to know about. Um, also, in terms of using thread on the um, on the machine, so this is a giant purring tentacle that I made, and it's um, you can see here. This is a this is a silver stitch, and I've put put this through the sewing machine. Um, it, and it's really um, this is like four years old at this point, so it still works, still not tarnished at all. Um, and uh, yeah, you can use a zigzag stitch um, to get some flexibility with that conductive thread. So um, it's it's worth. Uh, worth trying. So yeah, couching and zigzag stitching, um, is, is a, they're both really good techniques for that. Um, so the field of electronic embroidery, this is a, this is a picture from um, a really exciting um, development. So when I did, I did like a two, two week residency at Microsoft Research just before the pandemic hit. And I got to go to this experimental textiles lab where they were doing industrial embroidery. Um, this is something I can't, so everything on this, this is a Circuit Playground Express um, with the um, USB cable. Everything on this was machine sewed by hand. Uh, sorry, not by hand, oh, words. Yeah, it was, it, it was an industrial machine. So these, um, you can't it's feel, it sounds like a machine gun. It goes so fast. It's like real industrial. Um, and yeah, this, they just um, embroidered the microcontroller straight in. Um, at the moment, nobody's doing that commercially, but people are doing that um, in experimental situations. Uh, but yeah, this is a, this is a proper industrial um, machine. But the thing that was really interesting, this is the first time I came across this thread, which is my favorite thread for um, any kind of uh, machine uh, machine sewing, uh, because it was designed actually by an embroidery company. They don't do tech, they just do embroidery. They've just created a new range. So uh, it, it's a much better thread. Um, we don't have time to talk about that. This one's cool. Lots of uh, this is an embroidery example of uh, well, this is an embroidery technique um, called moss embroidery, and this is um, this is used um, in medical. So th this is actually already in use. Like I'd say, the medical and the car industry are probably the two industries that are really making use of e-textiles now. Um, the rest, but the the cutting edge stuff is really um, happening in the community. I have to say. All right, so. The term e-textiles is used extremely generically, so it's not particularly useful anymore. And I'm going to use it here just to refer to conductive materials that have cloth-like properties. Um, Again, we're looking at f when you're choosing these fabrics, you need to check the uh, data sheet for the resistance. You need to uh, check if it's solderable or not, what thick, how thick is it. But also, when you're coming to work with textiles, you also need to consider the feel of it on the body uh, because the, fab the, the threads will go in the substrate, right? But the fabric is, is you know, it, some of them feel terrible, so you don't want to put them on your body. Um, so the basic difference here, and I'm not, again, I'm not going to go too big into this, but this is really useful for you to know as you're starting out with e-textiles, is there are two basic, um, there are two, the most common types of fabric you'll come across are woven versus knit. So woven is made up of, I've got a slide here, you can see this. So this is, um, this is a, a loom, this is how you make a fabric like this, um, and, and uh, a woven thread is made up of um, this warp that goes along, and then you um, weave it, you go up and down um, uh, along here. So that's the basic, um, um, gist of this. So something that's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters created by this technique will have the same conductivity um, on you know, X and Y, right? So whereas if it's knit, because knitting is not made by just doing this, knitting is made of one single strand that's been looped over and over and over again, which changes the physical properties in that it's stretchy in one direction and not stretchy in the other direction, but it also changes the electrical properties. Um, 
it's because it has like um, it's it's like 40, it's, you know, like this particular one. It's like 40 ohms one way and like 460 ohms the other way. So it's like actually a very big difference. Whereas the with the woven conductive stuff is like one ohm in each direction. But it's the same. But yeah, you should definitely know what those are <laughs> if you're starting out. Both of these fabrics are available from Adafruit as well. Um, uh, okay, I'm, I've got, I haven't got time to do any of this. Oh, you should know about Velostat. Velostat's amazing. Don't buy it from Adafruit, though. It's very expensive from there. Um, tapes you should definitely know about. There's a bunch of really interesting fabric tapes. You can also get sheets of them that you can cut by CNC to make really interesting things. And it's great for prototyping, very quick and dirty. Um, this is something I really wanted to show you. So Cobacant is like the Bible's the Bible for wearables people. Um, there are these people like Hannah and Mika based in um, Berlin. Um, I was lucky enough to live really close to their studio in Berlin. But this website here has got loads and loads and loads of great tutorials. So if you are looking for projects, if you're looking to take your first steps, this is one of the really good resources out there. It's Cobacant DIY. There's also a bunch of good there's also a good a bunch of good resources um, on both the Adafruit and the Sparkfun website. Um, Adafruit got um, Becky Stern, who's done loads of really amazing stuff um, to do a bunch of uh, wearables um, videos that are still up, and they're really worth looking at. And also, um, uh, yeah, there's just there's a, um, I, I really rate Sophie Wong's book on wearables that Hackspace um, that Hackspace published, which you can also get as a free download as well. So would highly recommend that. All right, here's the here's, here are the most here's the most exciting side of the whole thing, right? So so one of the things about this is everybody knows that they can buy stuff from Adafruit and Sparkfun. A lot of these places are really weird, and you have to like order things in a, stu in a stupid way. So Adafruit and Sparkfun, we all know and love. You can buy small quantities of things. It's there's a market, but you know you know what you're getting. You get good customer service. Less EMF is a US-based thing, and it's mostly catering to people like this. Uh, it's largely people who want to surround themselves and their loved ones in RFID shielding because they're terrified of the government doing microwaving. I'm not joking, that's literally what it is. And that's a, it's a really great source of not only conductive materials, but really great conductive paint, much cheaper than the bare conductive stuff. But yeah, less EMF, they're bonkers, but they have really, really good materials. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, they, they're they're really good. Okay, so also so Vtex Textiles, also based in the U.S. Well, it's actually a U.S. distributor of Statex, which is a German um, company with really great materials. Um, also in the U.S., we've got Madeira USA. So Madeira is the name of the thread, and it's called the Madeira HC range, high conductivity. Um, they've, it's only just been available. You have to sign in, you have to create a, an account to get it. But you used to, like I used to have to email a woman called Kathy, like to get this thread. So I'm very excited it's now distributed. Um, all of these things. So it's really worth knowing about these. So Carl Graham, you'll hear a lot um, in eTextiles. Carl Graham is a beautiful, stunning, and solderable thread. I've got both the silver and the copper with me if you want to have a look. However, do not go to their website. It used to be just a terrible flash website, and now it will try and destroy your computer. So do not go to carlgrim.de. There is an email address you can use, but if you write to them in English, they will just ignore you. So, uh, so you can buy it, just don't go to the website, try and find their email address and only email them in German and you will get this, oh, the thread's so good, so delicious. Um, the, the other one I really like, which has got so much personality and has some great threads that you can't get anywhere, is this Barton Francis. Um, this is a Belgian company and that's this here. It's like, I will not do your work, do it yourself. This is the main sales page for their e-textiles. Like before you even, they even tell you any of these things, they're like, don't ask us for any information, don't talk to us, go away. <laughs> like, and if you, if you get through their whole list of like complaints, then you can buy their products. But they do have really good stuff. Um, but yeah, Barton Francis, uh, not a lot of people know about that one um, in the US, but it's, it's really great, uh, really good stuff. So my favorites um, of the stuff you can get, Ran, like him easily and with good customer service. Adafruits is fine. It's kind of waxy, so the uh, sometimes the knots undo, which is un annoying. But you can seal them with hot glue or some nail varnish. Carl Grimm is that beautiful one, um, great for hand soldering. Uh, like so, this is a this is a chair I made with magenta from Hackaday, and this is um, this is the Carl Grimm thread. You can see it's very shiny and very beautiful. 
Um, but yeah, it's difficult to get. And then the Madeira HC. That's, that's, that's my everyday thread. And I've got two spools of that with me as well. So if you want, and also if, if you want, I can give you some to take away to have a go at. Um, so yeah, Madeira is great. It's just not very, it's not very sexy. Um, and like the Carl Grimm one is beautiful, but um, yeah, you, it's, it's kind of very difficult to get. Um, so that's my 20 minutes allotted. I can't. Uh, I don't have uh, enough time to, to um, talk about um, flexible circuits. You should try them. They're really fun. You can get them quantity three in Osh Park now. Um, Soft Robotics is also super fun. These are a great hacker group in the UK called Air Giants HQ, doing really awesome interactive hackable um, soft robotics. Um, no, no, no. Oh, this one's some, probably in the room. Um, the Tinker Mines um, Arduino-based programmable air. That's a really cool one. And um, yeah, that's, uh, oh yeah, this was my bonus bonus slide of my favorite things to use. So this one's great. I always go on about Bella. I'm like the world's biggest Bella um, fangirl. They're more of an advanced single board computer. Um, based on a beagle board, but it's a cape for the beagle board, which gives like mwah, delicious latency. Um, and Becky Stewart, who is leading Xeron, get her, she's got loads of really great tutorials for them. But yeah, I would highly recommend the Bella and the, Be the beagle board if you're like already an advanced user. Um, yeah, anything with castellated edges is great for sewing too, because you can hook on your thread. Um, so yeah, that's my bonus slides. I've gone four minutes over my time, so I'm gonna stop talking now, but I will be out in the, you know, alleyway. Um, with a bunch of uh, weird textile stuff, if any of you actually want to come up and have a look and see some of the techniques that I've been using. I didn't even talk about this. This was my nipple top. <laughs> well, that exists, yeah. All right, that's it, I'm done. <laughs>